Hi, and welcome back for some more Cricket History with Ian Perry. Ian, how are you doing? I'm not too bad, thanks. A bit frustrated at the, the way the, the, the wind and rains ruined my season so far. <laughs> but, um, yeah, getting there, thank you. Getting there, have it yourself. Yeah, I'm not too bad, but like you, I'm uh, sat at home watching it rain and the wind blow everything everywhere. But hopefully soon, the summer will arrive. Um, and speaking of somewhere that's typically wet and windy, uh, today we are talking about Welsh cricket. Um, for those viewers that don't know, it is the England and Wales cricket board, and often that Welsh part can be overlooked, which I don't think is right. And thus I set Ian a challenge to dig up or see what he could find with Welsh cricket, and as always, he has delivered. So Ian, really, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the origins of the game rather than going through sort of blow by blow of the whole history because I think the origins of the game and um, of course, you know, that, that old Rudyard Kipling thing of the child is father of the man, the, the, the genesis of cricket in Wales has actually shaped very much what it's like now. Um, of course, you know, everybody accepts that cricket started in the south of England in the rural weald, so Kent and Sussex. Um, early part of the 18th century saw a very rapid growth in the game. Of course, those first set of laws codified in 1744. And of course, that's a time when very few people actually travelled any distance. Um, very few canals existed. There were, uh, the roads were very poor. Um, of course, no power to travel. Everything went by horse. Um, and the railways hadn't been in, invented. There was no radio. The, even the, the semaphore telegraph, those big wooden structures with arms that could flap around to send messages from one hill to the next to the next, are brilliant, but it only came on stream during the Napoleonic Wars. So end of the um, 18th century, start of the 19th. So in, in the 1700s, of course, you know, the, the ability of um, a new innovation to move around even just within the country was very limited and yet cricket's roots were already starting to, uh, to take hold in Wales and um, first mentions of the game in Wales are, um, are actually from the 1760s and 1770s. There's a, a reference to early cricket in Pembroke apparently from the 19, uh, 1760s but the first concrete reference um, it's actually somebody writing to a newspaper in 1771 complaining about the, the noise and the profanity of um, players in Swansea. Now, funnily enough, you know, whenever we see these early records of the game, it's always um, cricketers appearing in front of the beak, um, the church courts particularly, complaining about playing cricket on the Sabbath um, you know, when, they, when they should have been on their knees at, at their prayers. Um, and, of course, in a very um, strongly religious um, part of the world, of course, South Wales, very strong Methodist tradition, very deeply religious, and this this must have been considered a terrible, terrible sin. Um, there's there's a reference to a game played in Carmarthenshire. It's called Henry Down, which is roughly midway between Carmarthen and Llandeilo, in August 1783, uh, played between two teams of gentlemen, respectively, from the west and east of the county, divided by a river. Um, apparently, they played for a bag of a, 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 um, a prize of 50 guineas which is, of course was quite a substantial sum in those days um, again set up by one John Phillips a young man who was very prominent in West Wales, West Wales and um, in society also in London um, he'd obviously had a lot of influence behind him because at I think at the age of 23 he was already the MP for Carmarthen and also the town's mayor to boot um, the first Wales five that was also in Swansea. Um, Do we know what it's called, um, Ian? Do we know what the club was uh, called? I, I haven't actually found anything other than the reference to the establishment of a club. I'd love to know. I'm, I'm guessing it, it would have been something really imaginative, like the Swansea Cricket Club. Um, love it. So, if uh, it's a challenge there for anybody then out there, if you know of the first cricket club in Swansea, please let us know. Interlude. <laughs> For those Absolutely. of you that can't see, Ian's just having a quick sip of his wine. What have we got this, what have we got this evening? Um, this is a Nero de Tavola. It's a Sicilian red. Um, it's only the tail end of a bottle I opened a couple of nights ago. Um, but it's, um, it's, it hasn't faded too badly yet. Um, it's not going to get the chance. Love it. Love it. Right, um, back to the cricket. Come going, on, Ian. Going back. So, of course, 
in, in Wales, you've got this very strong um, kind of bias between the, the south of the south of Wales, very heavily industrialised, of course, dominated by um, coal mining and later by steel making. And then as you go further north through Paris up into the, the north of Wales, it's very rural, it's um, very sparsely populated. And so it's inevitable that um, with such isolation of communities up in the north that um, the, the games growth would be very different. And um, because, and, and I think this, this is actually probably part of why um, only cricket in South Wales has really survived in a, a, a fully organised form, is that, um, of course, partly the topography, partly that um, radical difference in the, uh, the, the distribution of the population, that um, cricket at, a, at a, a large scale level always struggled to, to really take root in the north. There are, of course, early references to to playing in, in the north up in Flintshire. Uh, one John Jones, a poet, wrote specifically about the playing of cricket on the Sabbath again, so complaining about you know, these ungodly heathens um, with their profanity and their loud noises playing cricket in the 1790s. First official record of a match is later from about 1820 between Hanmer and Overton, two villages near Wrexham. But of course, as um, travel became easier as the roads improved, as the, the railways started to make it easier for people to travel. Then, of course, it became much more straightforward for people to, to move from, from one town to the next to play cricket and, and, of course, to then effectively spread the game. Um, military, military garrisons, of course, um, a, a, another group of people who might who might start to play and of course it was seen as being an athletic sport so um, of course that's that meant that um, all the barracks had cricket grounds um, and the presence of church schools spreading this very Victorian image of muscular Christianity then of course a, an, an athletic sport clean and healthy for young men to to practice um, so it was it was obviously a very far cry from the, the drinking and gambling that's often associated with the game's early days in England. But of course, the other thing about travel was it meant tourism. And um, in places like Tenby, which very rapidly became tourist hotspots, you would actually have um, tourists turning up with their cricket kits and forming impromptu visitors' elevens to play local clubs, which I think is a marvellous thing. And it's something that we should now do again, because it's effectively the individual version of a, of a club going on tour. Right. Yeah. So it's young man with bat will travel. Um, <coughs> everybody, bring, the, everybody bring one piece of kit. One, <laughs> one boot, ex one pad, one bat. <laughs> Except that under COVID regulations, you're not allowed to share kit. So, of course, you'd be back to the old primary school days of players batting with one pad and one glove. Because that's all they, <laughs> uh, they've got. <coughs> um, not, very, not very good if you have a body line series, is it, that? Oh, no, that would not be, that would not be friendly. <laughs> the, uh, the, the Cardiff Cricket Club was um, established in 1845, initially playing at a place called Long Cross which is where the Cardiff Royal Infirmary is now. But after three years, they moved to um, a place that, of course, nobody's ever heard of called the Cardiff Arms Park. Um, and um, indeed, both the Arms and St Helens in Swansea, of course, were both cricket grounds before they became world-renowned, internationally um, admired and loved rugby venues. Of course... Um, at around this time, you'd also then have clubs um, starting to form, um, particularly from the, the wealthy and the, the better connected people, and styling themselves as county sides. Um, many of these developed from what were originally those country house cricket teams, which, as in England, were very much part of the, 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 the society scene. Um, the Monmouthshire Cricket Club, was a case in point, having started up in about 1820, played most of its games at Raglan, um, and it would, in fact, build 18 very social game against an All England team, 
um, and one, which is a seminal moment in the Welsh game. Uh, of course, notwithstanding that it was 22 men at Monmouthshire against the Old England eleven, But the thing about games like that was that alongside the cricket, there'd be a big ball, there'd be lots of very society, social gathering and, and lots of um, opportunity for the, the young men and women of, of society to, to mingle, to to um, do a bit of uh, catching an eye and uh, a cheeky smile across a glass of champagne. And, and of course, that was part of society in the round in those days. Um, Pembrokeshire also had similar roots in the, that country house cricket in the 1830s. And of course, that led to the establishment of a county club in 1847. The, um, the South Wales Cricket Club formed in 1859 which ultimately actually became the nucleus for Glamorgan County Cricket Club, the official county cricket club, which established in 1888. Um, meanwhile, in 1864, the first recognised official county sides, these were genuine county sides drawn from the best of the players, not just simply the, the young men of, of, the, count, of the, the county society. And um, Monmouthshire then established in, so it's got Carmarthenshire, Denbyshire, um, and Monmouthshire in 18, uh, 1892. And these actually, along with what became Glamorgan, formed the, the first foray into the minor counties championships around the turn of the century and into the interwar years. Yeah. Um, however, of course, Glamorgan went from strength to strength and actually gained first class status in 1921. But the others, all struggled, they withdrew from the minor counties and faded away, so that they've es essentially reduced to what we have now, which is a, um, an effective club scene, but not really anything above that. Um, but then, from the very earliest times, you'd have overseas tour sides coming and playing those county sides, playing other representative games, so for instance at North versus South in the 1880s and also even up to 1922-1923. Glamorgan and Monmouthshire played together as South Wales on a number of times including playing um, Australians in 1902. So we've, we've got all of these quite significant changes taking place as individual Sort of self-appointed county sides then morphed into so I suppose it leads into the question of why did cricket not grow across Wales as successfully as it did across England mm. I'm not really sure I think there's a number of factors we touched on the the way that the individual counties never really took root apart from Glamorgan which of course was heavily populated very well connected probably better connected than further north and further west in Wales um, You've also got, even in those industrialised areas, you've got a lot of very heavy manual labour. Um, a lot of people paid on piecework rates rather than on a flat salary, which meant, of course, that any time they weren't working, they weren't earning. So recreation and recreational sport, particularly something that would take a long time, like a, a full day playing cricket, obviously would not be quite so appealing. Whereas, of course, rugby and football, as they came into into prominence of course much quicker and therefore much easier to kind of fit into all, all of the rest of your working week we touched on methodism and temperance of course drink being always very strongly associated with cricket in england and of course a lot of wales is very up and down so yeah. um not not a lot of actual flat land which wasn't already built on for industry or for um, or for housing and the other thing that certainly would have been a factor is of course as um, the game started to develop over just the other side of the border in, in the flatter better connected lands of Gloucestershire Herefordshire um, of course would be that players starting to make a name for themselves, starting to um, actually think that this is something that they, they could actually do for a living rather than the heavy manual labour that was the main industries of South Wales. Of course, you know, they get drawn across to play for English clubs, obviously more status, greater access um, to 
a more connected game and um, of course that then may well have bled some of those players away um, who would otherwise have actually formed part of a, a growing, thriving cricket in other parts of Wales. Um, you, so lose, you lose your role models there, don't you? See, that's the thing, isn't it? You yeah. lose your Welsh role models. And of course, the, the visibility and the accessibility of role models is an integral part of the growth of the game. Yeah. And that's something, of course, that we see all the way through and up, up till now as well. Of course, as, as the game had struggled, it seems that have been lost. Um, I touched on the Arms Park just now. Um, from the 1848 season, the Arms Park was um, a cricket ground, but then, and, and it, in fact, it was, it was a cricket ground all the way through until the 1960s. Um, but then the expansion of the rugby ground alongside it in the late 60s into the early 70s, then swallowed up the cricket ground and um, Glamorgan County Cricket Club and Car- Cardiff Cricket Club then moved to Sophia Gardens instead. And, um, of course, were there for a long time. Um, there's so many other grounds, like the, the Barracks Field at Mainly, which is to the north of Cardiff City Centre, was used heavily for military and civilian cricket from 1876 all the way through to the 1950s. And um, inter-service games, even some representative games, like Glamorgan Past versus Glamorgan Future in, in 1945. But combination of the expansion of Cardiff and the the end of national service and of course then the contraction of many of the barracks um, meant that um, the ground was sold off for development and in fact now Companies House which is the government organisation that, that take, effectively controls every limited company, every um, limited liability partnership etc within the UK now sits right on the cricket ground cool. <laughs> so that's kind of an insult to injury in my view. <laughs> yeah. Um, so many industrial industrial organisations, so many different com- companies in South Wales, like um, Saunders Valves, Girlings, who make um, car brake systems particularly, Western's Biscuits, the home of the Jammy Dodger and the, the Wagon Wheel, um, at St Arnhem, the Orb Works of Newport, Electrical Works, British Nylon Spinners of Pontypool, all of these companies actually had their own cricket grounds, which is where the, their employees would play. Um, and of course, as the factories have closed, as the, the, the businesses themselves have either moved on and up or down and, and been taken over, so the factories themselves have closed and the land, that precious flat, good quality land has then been used for, for further industrial use or for housing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, of course, in, in a, a microcosm. You know, what's happened to so many grounds? Um, I know, it's quite amazing really, isn't it, to see... I suppose I've learned a huge amount here. You know? I, I've always been fascinated by the fact that we're the England Wales Cricket Board, and yet most people who are cricket fans couldn't tell you a lot about Welsh cricket, or really... Mm-hmm where the games are, where the grounds are, you know, other than, oh, it's Glamorgan and it's Sophia Gardens, they, they probably couldn't tell you any more. So, no, thank you for that, Ian. I, I was really interested in that. 